All right. Hi, everyone. This is Chris Petrie. Thanks so much for coming by, and uh, I'm glad you're here today, and we're going to have uh, a good time. We're going to create a uh, painting of the Grand Canal in Italy, and uh, we're going to work from a phone. Uh, this is an iPhone I have. Um, so what I do is usually I'll go online and I'll find a photograph that looks really good, um, that, I, that I'll enjoy something that like s seems to work. Like this is a, a good uh, scene here of the Grand Canal in Italy. And I can zoom in or zoom out on my phone and use this for my um, subject matter. So I can find a photograph I like. It could be a painting. It could be a photograph. Um, as an artist, uh, you're the artist. You can choose your creative um, subject matter that you use for your art. You can um, create abstraction from what you're seeing. So if I see uh, really incredible amounts of detail in this painting, it could look in, at first a little intimidating to say, wow, I have to draw all that detail and then paint it. But for here, for here, what we're going to do is we're going to abstract this a little bit. We're going to do a little more of a loose approach. We're going to use more water, more paint. Maybe we're going to create a little bit of like a um, silhouette of this scene versus trying to um, paint all of the details. We can sort of um, uh, create a little bit of something that will work for us a little better as we paint. So as an artist, you can always be creative. Try new ideas with um, your subject matter. Um, you can use a variety of things, photographs from books, um, workbook, watercolor workbooks. You can work off of uh, a TV set. You can find a picture on a video, maybe a DVD or uh, a video you have. You can stop the video, uh, pause it, and use that. for. I've used so many different things uh, cre you know, in a creative sense to come up with subject matter when painting and drawing and so forth. So I'll have a video coming up in the very near future where I'll describe how I use like my different... Uh, um, technology to um, to come up with my artistic ideas sometimes and it'll be a help I think to everyone I know I've gotten numerous uh, um, uh, comments in the comment section and even a few emails just recently on uh, how I uh, how I use my subject matter because I realize sometimes I'm not showing you the subject matter I'm working from on camera because they only have so much space to really put everything in. And I, I think it'll be more of a problem trying to put more things into my uh, ca camera lens here. So we'll zoom back. That's the picture I'm going to use. On the internet, I found a picture of the Grand Canal in Italy. And I'll set this uh, uh, actually to the side over here to my left. So I'll find a spot to put my phone. Um, I think actually uh, across from me on the table is best. Okay, so again, we're gonna start off as we always do with a drawing, a light preliminary sketch. Um, and then this way, if we see something we need to adjust, we'll, we can just do a little bit of erasing and readjust the drawing and then we can go in and do our final drawing, and then from there we can do our painting. All right, so let's start our preliminary sketch of the Grand Canal. We have a beautiful scene here, water, boats, um, beautiful buildings. And, uh, okay, so the first thing we're going to do is let's kind of come up with our main game plan here of where things are in our scene. So the first thing I would say is around about halfway, maybe a little bit, maybe just a little bit less than halfway is our buildings that start over here on the right. And then even over on the left side, <clears throat> I notice it, uh, it's a little lower over here, not by a whole lot, but we, we can... Always use a ruler maybe and go across and just kind of say that we want to make the left side a little lower where the um, 
the distant uh, city is across the uh, Grand Canal here. So we'll make it the, the width of the ruler lower, like that. And I might not show the information on the left-hand side that I saw in the photograph. So I'm just going to leave it more simple. Um, and that's really all we're going to need. The, um, the dome over here is about halfway, but a little bit to the right. So we'll keep the dome about here. A little bit to the right of center. So if this is the center, the dome, the would be about here. And I think that's good. We can work from this. And again, we can change things around a little bit. If you see, it's going to be a little easier to do this um, by adjusting your drawing and your painting. And we'll do that now. We'll, we'll do a little bit of adjusting. I'll I'll describe what I'm going to do here. So. On this, I'm going to um, I'm just going to make it a very with my preliminary sketch a very soft angle um, towards the uh, distant. So here's the uh, distant city across. Preliminary light sketch. And I'm just uh, following what I see in the photograph. And I'm going across. And then here I, I see the Closer to us now, this is the far distance here. Then closer to us here, I see the buildings are starting about there. And I'm not going to really do too much information in there. I think we're going to keep this more simple, more abstract. And then we have the dome here. So a preliminary, this light preliminary sketch will give me the ability to get everything sort of lined up where we want it and I'm just going to do the uh, the domes here and there's some more Okay, that, that's about good. Now I can do a little work on the interior of this here, maybe, just to maybe get some, a little bit of detail on the buildings, but I think I'm not going to do too much. Maybe just a few more lines here and there. And these will be good to capture some detail in these buildings so that it's very, to someone that might live in near the Grand Canal, they would see this and they would identify it and say, oh yeah, that's, you know, I know where that is. That's so enough detail that we're going to capture the place and, but not so much detail that it's uh, agonizing to do. And I think that's going to be good there. So this is our preliminary sketch. We, we, um, we'll just finish up here. We'll get the I just take my time very lightly. Sometimes lightly sketching too really makes it a lot easier. Or lightly drawing. So I'm just contour drawing really very lightly. And when we do that very lightly it actually makes it easier to change the direction of the pencil and sort of feel out lines a little bit. And 
And then we can do some detail here. There's some boats and interesting things along here. So we're going to put in some boats and the shoreline here, but not too much detail. I just want to sort of have a, a little bit of a few details here and there. Okay, that's good. Okay, preliminary sketch is done. Let's take a break. We worked really hard on this preliminary sketch. We got everything almost exactly perfect. And when we come back in five or ten minutes, we can look at it again and look at the photograph on our uh, on our phone and see, or our laptop if we have, and uh, or iPad or any kind of device you have, electronic device. If we're looking at that photograph, we can maybe look one more time just to see if we missed anything, and then we'll we'll start and we'll kind of get more of the. Uh, We'll do the final drawing, and then we'll, then we'll be we'll be ready to paint. Okay, so we'll be back in just a few minutes after we take a break. Okay, we've taken we took a break, five or ten minutes. That's all, you know, just to um, relax a little bit. And now we're back, and we're gonna continue with our drawing. Now's the time we come back from our first break, and we just look at the drawing and think, uh, you know, say to ourselves, do we, do we think we need to change anything? It looks pretty good. I'm looking at the um, photograph. Um, we can zoom in again on my uh, phone here just to... I'm using this reference photograph. And it looks good. And again, I'm going to change this painting and make it more abstract. It won't be as detailed. Um, I want to do a little bit of a different type painting where we're just going to have more fun. We'll do a little more water, a little more paint, a little more um, just a looser interpretation of this uh, scene. And we'll see how it comes out. We'll try it out. So we'll uh, zoom back out here. And then I'll just go in and I'll do my final contour drawing. And I'm just going slowly looking at the photograph. Maybe trying to just get a couple subtle details as I go through here. And I noticed some architectural details, so I'll try to put those in. It's surprising, just a few architectural details on a, on a painting can really make it uh, much more, um, you know, true to life. And so I'll put in some of those windows I see. And the closer in this scene, the, this is the area that's closest to us here, and then it it slowly goes into the distance distance until finally we're at the all the way across the the Grand Canal here where there's other areas of the city and um, so close 
if it's closer we'll see a little more detail and then in the distance we're not worrying too much just uh, a good uh, bit of uh, detail just to help us rem remember that there's some undulations in the in the uh, skyline here across the way and then we have everything All right, that looks good. Now that's our final contour drawing. And again, I just check one more time, just for a few more details I might be able to Maybe a few darks or something, you know, just to windows or architectural features. And sometimes, too, we, when we add more details, we don't always necessarily have to use them. We can paint over them. And while we're painting over them, we can usually see the pencil lines underneath very faintly. And then, and then we can use those as areas where we can add a little uh, bit of extra color or some darker tonal values or maybe a little bit of light, leaving a little bit of light in some sections. So, And if you want, you can always make a note on something uh, to leave something, a white paper, if you would care to. On, on this painting, I'm going to make this a painting where we're looking into the light, so the sunlight's going to be facing us. So I'll just put an insignia up top that we're sort of facing the light in front of us. So we're, we're looking into the light on the sun's uh, up in the sky towards us. So maybe we're going to make most of this like darker, um, darker colors, darker tonal values. So it's going to be like a silhouette. We'll use plenty of water, plenty of paint. We'll do some interesting um, shadowing effects. So we'll put the building in here. We'll make the shadows. I should say the reflections on the water. So I'm just going to rough in my shadow effects, reflection effects on the water. And just very light indications just to kind of remind me when I'm painting that this is basically the shapes and where they're going to be for the reflections of the buildings on the water. and. Uh, you can always change your approach on reflections in water. If the water is really choppy and it's very windy, you might not see very much um, reflections of the buildings in the water. If the water is really calm and still, you'll see reflections in the water, uh, very accurate um, reflections, almost as if there's a mirror below the building. So it all depends on the water. If there's a ton if there's a lot of water in you know movement in the water, waves and wakes and choppiness to the water you might only see little bits of uh, reflections and then if it's very still the water again you'll see a very definite reflection almost an exact uh, reflection down into the water so let's have some fun with this we'll actually uh, get ready to paint let's take another break it's good to take breaks relax and then we'll come back and we'll um, we'll start to paint
Okay, it's always good. We took our break, you know, 10 minutes or so. Um, and we're ready to start painting now, and we have our drawing completed, our final contour drawing, and we just recall back that we did a preliminary sketch first. We took a break, then we came back, we said, do we need any changes maybe? We, everything looked pretty good. We went in and we did our final contour drawing where we really got our darker lines in here. So we got our darker second uh, contour drawing over our first light preliminary sketch. We also put in some more uh, f uh, st stronger details that um, are in the uh, picture that we were working from. Our photograph of uh, the Grand Canal in uh, Venice, Italy. And uh, we just used our phone here, so I have my picture on my phone that I uh, am working from. And I'm going to use this to also work from when I paint for the details that we're looking at. So I'll use this photograph on my cell phone. And occasionally I do work from my laptop as well as my TV, um, or I print out a picture or I work from books. So I use a lot of different things to uh, create paintings or outdoors, just painting in, uh, you know, a la prima and, and um, in plain air. Uh, work I, from sketchbooks, so you can work from your sketchbooks that you keep. So I'll put that across for me. We'll zoom back out. We can see the sketch there a little closer. The contour drawing, I should say. All right, so we're all set up there. We have the camera set up, and we'll we're going to use our paints. Um, for my for those of you that you your regulars here and you subscribe and you're uh, getting notifications when you click the bell, so you're, you're getting my uh, notifications every week and you're seeing my videos. Uh, that's awesome. So you'll kind of be familiar with my palette already and my paint colors. Um, and uh, also, if you're new here, uh, please consider subscribing. You can subscribe and uh, click the notification bell and you'll be alerted uh, each, and, each and every week we create a new video. We do the, the pretty much the same format. We just go from start to finish, A to Z, with the process of creating a watercolor painting. And it could be all different styles, flowers, seascapes, landscapes, still life, figures, um, just a, a number of uh, uh, different uh, material we cover here. And um, so I, I hope you'll uh, join us if you aren't subscribed. And I'll do one more thing. I'm going to run across the studio here and grab my paint chart. Okay, this is my paint chart, and I'll zoom in on it. You can also um, pause the video if you want to see the colors. They're all listed here. So that's all the uh, paint colors in my palette, exactly the way you see them. And we'll zoom back out again. And uh, I'm going to use uh, mop brushes. Uh, this is a number six and a number two mop brush. And uh, we'll start here. And we'll, I'm using uh, fresh clean water in a bucket, collapsible water uh, container. And we'll get started here. We'll mix up a nice sky color. Um, let's go with some yellow ochre, French ultramarine blue. Cerulean blue. We use some alizarin crimson. We'll mix up a nice little bit of burnt umber to tone down the uh, blue a little bit. 
And let's try this out. Looks pretty good. I'm going to go back and forth to my water bucket to pick up water. Um, one more cerulean blue. So I'm using a lot of water here. This is the first wash. We're going to use the glazing technique. So I'm going to use plenty of water and I'll just keep mixing the same colors. French ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, a little bit of the mix there. and Let's have fun here. Let the water just, you know, um, let the water flow down the paper. You can see that the, the water is... I'm not using too much water that it's just flooding down the paper, but I'm using just enough that it's sort of holding its own as it's as we're working. And uh, this first wash will be light. And we can go right down into the subject matter. We don't have to worry. We go right over that. And then towards the uh, lower section here, let's put a little bit of the yellow ochre. And this is just like a, really an under coat of paint, really, just to get the the paper uh, coated with an undercoating, which will give a nice feel. And a little bit of lizard and crimson toward this section here. And while it's still wet, you can charge in some more color, cerulean blue. Uh, this is when we're having fun, we're getting some beautiful colors and washes on the paper, our first glazing, and when we do this, we we create that really nice feel of a uh, light in the sky with some changes here so we have a little darker over here and a little lighter over here and then down here we just get some more color here Now, if you see any really large puddles of water, you can go in and use a tissue and just put, you know, lift up a little bit. It's sometimes the, the the water will puddle up a little bit here and there if the if the paper is buckling and so forth. You know, you can lift up some of them larger uh, puddles of water, not a problem. You can lighten up an area of sky if you think you'd like to have that. Lift up a little paint. You can go along the bottom edge of the paper and lift up any puddles of water that you see along the bottom, just so it doesn't uh, cause uh, some unpleasant marks on the bottom of the paper. And you still have a little bit of time to work, and, you know, re-soften uh, some things in like that. All right, that's perfect. It's uh, our first coat. We're going to let this uh, this first glazing dry. Perfect time to take a break. We're going to take a nice 15, 20 minute break at this point. Um, we could use a blow dryer if we wanted to as well to um, dry this off a little bit and have that pro process faster. But uh, I'll probably let this dry naturally for about 15, 20 minutes and maybe use the blow, blow dryer just a little bit uh, also too if, it, if it's not ready. And we'll come back. We'll take a break and we'll be right back. Okay, so we've had a, a really nice break here. We took about five or ten minutes um, to relax, and then I did a little bit of uh, blow drying on this just to give it a little bit of a better start here as I um, begin to start the uh, second wash. So our second wash, or second glazing as we call it, we're going to start to get these uh, uh, buildings in the distance and this uh, the uh, Grand Canal here in the foreground and the uh, dome here and all this area. We're going to start to work this and I think we're going to do it more in a silhouette fashion so maybe we're not going to really have so many details in here than we 
that we originally uh, drew in here, but that's okay. Let's work with it. We'll see what we can do. I think it's going to be more fun doing this in a silhouette fashion. So we're just going to have this mostly like the darker darks through here. So let's, uh, we'll take our, um, a little bit smaller, um, mop brush and we'll make some darker, a darker mix, a uh, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, a little bit of cerulean blue, a little bit of lizard and crimson, burnt umber, a little bit of uh, yellow ochre, okay now what I'll do is make a little lighter, I'll pick up some water with my uh, brush here, I'll make this a little lighter, the, um, the distant uh, and cooler, the distant uh, area. So that's cerulean blue, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, a little bit of alizarin and crimson. We'll mix that up. A little bit of yellow ochre. And I'm going to make this uh, and this might be a little bit that's quite a bit of water I'm using with this mix here but I think it should be okay it'll dry lighter if you find you put a little too much water and paint onto a section you can always use the uh, tissue and you kind of like make it into a point or you know you fold up your tissue and make it sort of like smaller and, and you can actually lift up some paint if you find you've added a little too much water not a big deal so this is that distant area the distant city over here and then we'll work on this here and this will be dark as well um, yellow ochre French ultramarine blue lizard and crimson burnt umber and since we're going to go with the silhouette feel let's just uh, fire this in and, and get it done here so we're just going to do the shapes as we see them we're using our uh, high quality mop brush here and we're just gonna so I'm gonna try to not you know I'm trying to move here at a good pace if I have to kind of get a little bit more uh, for a finer detail I might choke up on the brush and you know move in like this and then and then back to more of a loose approach holding the brush up higher just to have that good feel of uh, looseness and more we'll mix some more paint here cerulean blue and I'm gonna just do all this in one silhouette And then I can just add some details. This will sometimes just going in and really not being so fussy really kind of looks good. And we have the This is pretty good here, and then we're going to do some of those details there. And then this is where we try to start to add a little more detail to the painting. I'm looking at my photograph across from me on my phone just to get more details that I can use. And we're going to pretend that the water is somewhat choppy. 
So we're not going to have every detail here. Maybe just... And we leave a little space there. And then before I go too much, let's add some green for the water. Sap green. Um, cerulean blue. Sap green, cerulean blue. And then a little bit of our mixture there. And this way we kind of have the water mixed in there. The water color of a little bit more of the greenish color. And then let's let's take a wash of that and then just dampen the brush. Wet the brush a little bit with some water. Just get some water on the brush and let that flow down. With that greenish color in the shadowing. And we can always go back and do a little more shadowing. Again, a lot of water. We leave some whites here along this, a couple whites of the paper just to, and the same with that distant area. And then maybe we'll uh, go in and we'll some more burnt umber, burnt, uh, and uh, French ultramarine blue for a dark. And we'll try to get a little bit of that darker um, reflection there on the water. And again, we'll try to, again, work in some of these shadows while the paint is wet. That's what makes watercolor beautiful. If you use a little bit of, normally we don't use this much water, but here we're having a little more fun we're trying to um, just, really we're using the same techniques really, just adding a little more water to our our technique here. So we're adding more more water than we normally do in this painting process. And it's a little more abstract. We're not, we're not having as much detail as we would normally have. And we're letting the water and paint just do its thing and I'll take some darker uh, mix there. Uh, French ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt umber and then we can just do a little more darker uh, tonal values down here along the water. I think that'll sort of give a feel of It's cool, cooler down here along the water, along the base of the building, and then as it, as the building is up higher, it, it's a little bit uh, has a little more light. And maybe I'll just add some more color. Now I'm going to go in and just add some more interesting colors. So I'll put some uh, yellow ochre here and there, maybe. So I'll just so now this is the point where we're just going to mix everything, have fun with the colors. Um, so I just did some yellow ochre. I rinse off my brush, dry it off a little. We'll go in and we'll get some uh, cadmium red, and we'll just do a little bit of cadmium red here and there, just for fun. Again, we're having fun with this. We're trying to create more of an abstract feel for this painting and we're also painting into the light so when you paint into the light you're painting um, you're getting more of a silhouette type feel with the painting so that's and we can go with some cerulean blue for more added color cobalt blue maybe down here cooler colors. <clears throat> and 
and I think what we're going to do is now we're going to take a little bit of a break. We can see some of the puddling here. Again, if you find that you're having the paper buckling and water building up, you can take some tissue and just uh, gently pick up some, some of that extra water that you see. If it makes a little bit of marks, no big deal. We can go back once it's, uh, we can wait for about 10 or 15 minutes and And I'll go in and make some darker mix here to uh, put that reflection in. Okay, let's uh, let this dry a little bit. We'll uh, maybe use the blow dryer and uh, then we can come back. We'll do some final details and I think that's pretty much will be completed. Okay, we, we took a little break here and we we noticed that when we work with a, quite a bit, with a lot more water and paint, the paper does buckle quite a bit more. So um, you can see here there's still some water in this area here where the paper kind of buckled and made like a small um, well here. I took a, some tissue uh, very lightly and just tapped along here and picked up some paint, some water and paint, the puddling, and that's not a problem to do. And I'm looking at this and I'm pretty happy with this. I'm actually thinking that the only thing left really here is maybe just some details on the um, upper parts of the building. So those are the darkest darks. So I'm gonna go right in and just use Burnt Umber, French Ultramarine Blue, a little, a little bit of a Lizard and Crimson, and we'll make a really strong dark here. That French Ultramarine Blue. And we'll use a needlepoint brush here and we'll, we'll carefully, we won't lean into the paint on the, on the, this is something where um, it's probably better to let the painting fully dry and then go back and do some of these final details. I'll be daring here and maybe just some more details here. Interesting details along the uh, tops of the buildings really make things uh, more realistic. And I'm looking at the paint, uh, the uh, photograph. Just to get some of the ideas of the uh, detailing. And the same over here, even in this distant uh, the distant shoreline here, there is some details we can kind of put in there and and what that does if we put if we put some interesting details in this distant uh, shoreline here in the city, that will create more of a um, three-dimensional feel because it's going to draw attention to it so then we're going to our eye is going to go over to that far shoreline and it'll be more um, real for us as we look at this uh, painting and again this is more abstract than what we normally do but that is the case when we're doing a painting when we're painting into the light um, a lot of detail gets uh, disappears in a sense because we're looking into the light and we're just seeing really dark shadows and I like to do paintings like this. Uh, we'll do more like this.
They're fun to do. And they're, they go a little quicker sometimes than more of a detailed painting. And you can make them, uh, you know, you can add uh, more detail if you like, or you can leave it a little less detail. But I feel this is good here just to add a few more, in essence, some shapes and, and marks on these uh, distant uh, set my uh, my phone again across from me just so I can see some of the and a few of these uh, architectural details really can uh, Make everything sort of flow together. All the uh, very subtle, though. I wouldn't do too many at all. I would do very few. And I see some of the those will become less noticeable too. The um, the marks that I'm making now, we're going to dry lighter. So even though they look a little dark right now, they will dry lighter. And there's some... And I'm just going to go across and put some of those lines. That's good. Okay, so we're going to call this uh, finish right now. Um, I tend to think um, it's a little bit of a temptation to go in and keep going with more details, and then sometimes it gets too much overdone. So I usually always say um, uh, if we sort of stop a little bit before we think it's finished, we can always, like the next day, go in and maybe do a few more touch-ups or details. Um, but if we just do too many when we're working on it, uh, the first time we're actually creating our painting. Like, so if we give it some time, maybe the next day we can go in and add a few more details if we really feel it's necessary. But a lot of times if we just stop a little bit sooner than we think we should, we'll be fine. We'll actually have a, a painting that's not too overdone. And so this, we accomplished that here. We didn't do with too many details here. We got our main subject matter in, a beautiful uh, scene in Venice, Italy, uh, the Grand Canal. Um, we left it more abstract. We didn't go with too many details. We left it kind of, you know, a comfortable feel of just the general essence of the scene. All right, let's uh, meet up again soon and we'll create another beautiful painting. Bye-bye.